In today's world, it can be difficult to quiet the mind and think. For many, a walk in the woods is still the best cure for the stresses of modern life. It's been a year since my good friend Joe and I threw hiked the River to River Trail, and already I long to return to the woods. To connect with nature, to challenge myself, and to discover new sights and sounds. next adventure takes us deep into the forests of southern Indiana. Join me as we embark on a southbound through hike of the Tecumseh Trail. I was thrilled to see my good friend Joe was joining me on another through hike adventure. Together we had traveled five hours from Chicago to take on this trail and explore the woods of southern Indiana. While this was my first time experiencing these woods, Joe had through hiked this trail before. Hikes and bike rides too, so just to my like different places. I just got my Achilles fixed, so I'm gonna start hiking again and get back in the backpack and it's been a while. Yeah. You are a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it right in the face of the page. You're showing for all the trails out here? The Tecumseh and the Knobstar. We had taken a shuttle ride to the northern terminus of the trail from where we staged our vehicle near the southern point. Morgan Monroe State Forest, our starting point for this grand adventure. As we set out, I was promptly reminded of why this trail was dubbed the Mini Knobstone. Oh, yeah. Or Mini KT for short. 
For those that don't know, the Knobstone Trail is another trail in Indiana, approximately 48 miles in length. Its difficulty is measured by its rugged terrain, steep elevation changes, and rocky paths. Also known as the Mini Appalachian Trail, the Knobstone was comparable by its overall challenging nature. So with Tecumseh holding the nickname of the Mini KT, it would soon be discovered just how challenging this trail would be, as I'm sure you will all hear by my exhaustive heavy breathing behind the camera. My apologies in advance. February into March. Where are we from? Should we put Shaw City? Yeah. Beats and jams. Hey V, line them up. Beats and Jams were trail names that Joe and I had given ourselves during our thru-hike together on the River to River Trail. Once again, Joe and I were a force on the trail, a team of trampers whose only ambition is to walk paths of dirt and stone among the deep woods, and brothers whose only goal are to conquer trails of scenic routes, admiring the experience along the way. Nothing really prepared me for the hills on this trail. Multiple ascents and declines on hills that peak at almost 900 feet with 45 to 50 degree inclines. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this trail very much, but it was a definite challenge and it almost broke me.
At the end of the day, I learned that Indiana holds its own significance when it comes to trails and miles earned. What seemed like such an arduous journey was merely a nine mile hike. And when we saw that first backcountry shelter, our tired bodies gave way to surrendered feelings of exhaustion. I broke out some brews I had packed out for Joe in celebration of our achievements. So we set a fire and later found comfort inside the shelter as night fell steadily around us. We awoke from our sleeping bags to the realization that we had slept through a thunderstorm the previous night. I soon discovered that it pays to purchase a new replacement filter before embarking on a thru-hike adventure. A few days prior I had soaked a previously used filter, thinking that since each bee free filter from Catadine has a promise of filtering a thousand liters, that I'd still get some use out of it. It pays for itself to have a fresh unused filter for each new adventure you go on. Joe made the best reference. He said, you figure you'll buy at least one drink while you're on vacation, right? Well, one replacement filter costs at least $26. So by itself, it's worth its weight for the amount of drinks you can get yourself on trail. Thanks, Joe. So anyways, because of this, my filter was slowly developing a plug which made filtering water extremely tough. Lesson for the day, never cheap out on your hike. So once we got water replenishment out of the way, we hit the trail again, making our way through Yellowwood State Forest as we approached Bear Lake.
Oh, yeah, buddy. Oh, the bench is new. The last time I was here, as far as the men It was still early when we made it to Fox Den Shelter. We decided to take a lunch break, and I offered to share with Joe one of my mountain house meals I had packed out. During our rest stop, we discovered a guest book, and Joe left our names in the book. Period. That's all you need to know. <laughs> the remainder of our time at the shelter was shared over a hot freezer bag meal of chicken teriyaki, accompanied by some tunes from Joe's phone. When we had reached State Route 45, we made the decision to continue on the original trail rather than the suggested reroute. The reroute was created due to a potentially unsafe section involving a railroad track crossing. So instead of adding two unnecessary miles to our trail, Joe and I carefully crossed the track, making sure to stay clear of any oncoming trains. While I managed to do it without incident, I must stress that this decision was my own and not one I recommend others to take lightly. We began our climb up Indian Hill. Eight hundred and eighty-six feet later, we made it to the Indian Hill shelter, where we took a lull to rest our tired legs, backs, and our feet. Drop our stuff. I know that there's. It was difficult, but we pulled ourselves from the porch of that shelter, shuffled our feet back into the dirt, and continued forward down the trail. As we approached the Plum Creek Road crossing, we encountered a very brief spell of rain. I saw it as an opportunity to try out my poncho pack cover for a second time since buying it. Eventually the clouds gave way to sunshine and our spirits were lifted.
road down there. Came from there. Going up this thing. We followed Plum Creek, and Joe continued to push me down the trail with promises of making it to a place to camp for the night. He called it his quote-unquote intuition from his previous time on the trail. It is uh, something funny about intuition. sunset, cooked us up some freeze-dried dinner, and set up our homes for the night. We had hiked 17 miles from the first backcountry shelter, and my body was most grateful the moment it rested onto my inflatable sleeping pad. In the early chilly morning hours, we crawled from our tents, stowed away our belongings, grabbed our packs, and set out on the trail to get to Yellowwood Lake. The sudden reality had hit that we still had a lot of miles to cover, and this would be the day to get through a vast majority of them. So we turned off our minds, ignored our sore bodies, and pushed onward down trail with hopes of completing within our given timeline. We hiked along the water's edge at Yellowwood Lake, greeted by the early morning birdfowl that paced the lake surface as they flew overhead from one end to the other. The peaceful serenity of the calm waters and the soft cool air helped get us through the next few miles. We took a break at the base of High King Hill to eat a quick snack and prepare us for the ascent to the top. 
But once we had made it to the top, we looked on at the lake we had just hiked along in amazement and wonder, especially of the distance we have come. This instilled in us both the motivation we needed to continue on. After having hiked the same forest service road for the past couple hours, we were glad to come upon the small town of Belmont, as this meant we were getting closer to finishing the trail. We continued down the busy State Route 46 with hopes of getting an ice-cold cola from the machine at the motel in town. We were in luck. The Coke machine was running and it had ice cold cola. Unfortunately, as I had reached for the change from the dispenser, I acquired a gnarly Charlie horse in my right leg. Eventually, it subsided. Now, how many miles are there between here and <laughs> After grabbing our cold Cokes, we walked across the street to check out the famous sock barn. I had promised my wife a geode, so I brought an extra pair of socks to donate for two geode rocks. I think she'll like these. We bid farewell to the barn and proceeded down the road to discover where the trail would pick back up into the woods. It wasn't long before we were back on trail and back in the woods. We would spend the next three miles walking along high ridges until we made our descent back to Crooked Creek Trailhead and where our car was parked. But this wouldn't be the end. There is still two more miles of the trail from the trailhead lot where our car is to the official end of the Tecumseh Trail, which means we would technically have to hike four miles out and back to the car to finish this trail. But I wasn't worried or concerned. We had done this before. I'm sure we'll do it again. We finished this section of the trail, motivating one another to push on to the end.
the last, we had made it to Crooked Creek Trailhead, and the car looked to be in one piece. I had left my pack at the car and slacked back this final section, but Joe insisted on continuing to carry his pack. So we set out to complete this grand adventure. Cheers.